Welcome to Trading Lounge and the European Indices for Wednesday, March 16th, and starting with the DAX on the uh, daily chart here. So, uh, yeah, look, um, I just need to chat about this for a little bit. We can look at the, from the top up here, we could look at the A wave, the B wave. This B wave was lower than the top here on the, uh, on the cash market. And then we can look at this down here in five waves, and there's a couple of different ways to count that down. But uh, can we view it as an A and a B wave and a C wave here and actually be completed and uh, continue to move up from that point? You know, that's one one thing that we need to consider. If that's not the case, then this move up through here, which we'll also have a look at on the cash market today, appears to be in five waves. So that means that we're going to see um, something like this here. Now, do we just come back to the 61.8% in the box here or the 15,000 and then move down lower from that point? Or do we find support on this level here and then continue to move up at that po at that stage you know that's what we've got to kind of figure out now um so just to recap that we either have three waves up to the fifteen thousand, say um and then we fail or we find support so it's those two moves basically so on that move to the upside there let's just uh, take a look at that in a couple of different ways so this counting it this way here would be one way of looking at it and the way that I came to this particular count because it's a little bit messy with the spike here and this little move through here so I looked at it viewed it on the cash market um, so this is the cash market here so let's just bring this into the frame a little bit better so we'll get a good good better visual on that and then we'll talk about it so if we look at this move here as an impulse wave and then a corrective wave and then an a and a b uh, sorry as one and two here and one two three four five for the third wave here the fourth wave here and then the fifth wave up here then we could look at this as one and two here and three here and four here and then going up for wave five here So it's pretty smooth on the cash market here where on the futures market the product that I use this chart this chart here is based off the futures market and the cash market it's a CFD product and I use that because that's what most people use to trade with rather than you know doing options on the on the physical market here or whatever so um there's a pretty good case in this regard of looking at this here as one and two here and three and four and five at this point. I'll just bring those down to minuet would do for this for this point. So that's, that can be five waves up here. Now obviously it can be counted differently because one of the things here is that this move that that's in this space here is in three waves. Or we could look at it as down for one, back for two, down for one and back for two. But if it takes that high out here then we will need to look at this, um, we'll have to count this I mean because to look at this as five waves up here that's that's kind of okay as a starting point right it's telling us that the market's impulsive but after five waves we'll get an ABC back but it's a little bit small like we should even get it back to the wave four here I mean normally we would look for a 61.8 percent further down here for that you know so it is rather small here so it's telling me that well perhaps I do have the count wrong um but what's the best way to look at it at that point so perhaps i need to look at this as wave one here with an abc back for wave two and that would give me a nice 50 60 percent retracement level back at that point and then i'll be looking further up at that stage but whichever way um i look at this it's still uh impulsive at this point you know well it's impulsive because if i looked at it um, in terms of a corrective wave as an A wave here, a B wave here, and then one and two and somehow push that up for three, four, five. To, I've still got this. As soon as that little top there is taken out, right, then um, 
which I think it is on the on the futures market in the off session, then it forces this to be corrective, you know. So just coming back to this this possibility here, then um, yeah, it looks a little bit sort of like impulsive to the upside. So it, it brings us back to if I just go back to the daily chart here for a moment. So we've got <clears throat> we've got a possible impulse wave to the upside for all of this here. And we've got a little corrective pattern. So it brings us back, do we go up into the 50-60% retracement level area here? Because see, I had this move up here as a wave 4 basically, but it's just going a bit too far now for that, you know? So I can't call it a wave 4 and then coming down for wave 5 in line with the uh, US markets unless it just drops from here. So the two ways that we need to look at it is that we need to either look at this move up here as, if I can just borrow these for a moment, is some sort of A and B wave in through here somewhere uh, and a C wave here, I'll just borrow that for the time being and plonk that in there and so on. It will probably want to, you know, if it go, if it finds support on 14,000 with the classic trading levels pattern on 14,000 there, then um, it's not it's not support yet, is it? I mean, it's trying to get above the 14,000. So we could use the 14,000 if you wanted to trade long as a classic trading levels pattern as a trade setup and go long. Um, and we can look at that. Um, but secondly, uh, and coming back to that the move up here, do we, you know, is it an impulse wave that keeps building to the upside and will eventually get support on 15 and continue to the upside? Well, look, it's possible. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, all I can say is that you can see that it's like tinkling, tinkling with the uh, 14,000 there. So, we need to have a look at that to see if we can get a trade set up on that. So in the bigger picture here, I don't know if we're going to get three waves at this point and fail, or we're going to be, you know, continuing up in five waves. But I do know that we should be looking for a setup on the 14,000, that's the closest, largest number, and then move from that point. So just going back to where we were there for a moment on those sort of five waves to the upside here. And if we put the 14, thousand in here close enough anyway so <clears throat> what I can see here is we've got an impulse wave here for this and I knew that off the um, off the US markets this morning so if I just look at this here this is the S&P 500 here so if you just want to follow me for a moment we've got little five waves here for wave one and two and then three here and four here and then we've got wave five to this point or to this point here so we can have this as an A and a B and a C back to this point uh, and have wave one here or there it doesn't really matter but it's five waves and then we've got a nice clear five wave structure for the third wave here then an A and a B and a C for the fourth and going up for the fifth obviously it looks like it wants to climb higher here as well so we'll need to adjust that um, but that's okay but the point being is that we've got five waves here so we're going to be seeing a further five waves up you know so that five waves we just looked at would be that little five waves in here so we could label that um, well let's just <clears throat> let's just use this one here for the time being so that means that we're going to have five waves up here so we're going to see some little um, some sort of either we can look at this in a couple of different ways. If we just use wave one here, then that would be wave one up into there. And then we'll have wave two back. And then we'll have wave three and four and five here. Now we can have that and that could be the top of the market and that could be the end of it. Or we're going to have an ABC back here again and then pushing up here again. So that could be, this is where it could fail here at the 14,000. So the safe trade would be above the B wave here. And then we could also look for this whole move here as one, two, three, four, five to be one and two over here for that. So yeah, to you know, to we really want to basically see that fourteen thousand as the um, support there for for a move to the upside. So that pretty much sort of. Um, says what I need to say really. So I know that this is a little bit sort of messy in here and when we look at the <clears throat> 
the stock 50 for example we can see that it's messy here as well and doesn't really give me a nice c wave down uh uh here for the, uh doesn't i mean i've got this here as an a wave here and then possibly some sort of b wave in here this see this one here this drops below this one here so it's okay to call this a b wave here but i don't really have this should be in five waves here as an a wave a b wave and a c wave i don't also have five waves in this little move here as well so it's all a little bit messy in here as well so um yesterday i didn't put a video out i was a bit struggling with my broken collarbone but um apologies about that it's um it's coming along though the um <clears throat> all the bruising starting to uh come out so which is all part of the healing process i guess and um yeah so it's all gone sort of yellow and whatnot all around the <clears throat> the shoulder and all across the chest there it um it looks worse than uh, Donald Trump's spray on yellow tan. Um, but look, um, the same thing goes here as well. <clears throat> we could use, you know, if you wanted to go long here, you can look at, um, I mean, 3.8 is going to be the big number here, but this 3.7 here is good because we know that we've got in here, you can see one and two here, and then we'll have like a little third wave, fourth wave and fifth. So we've got a little impulse wave here. So what I could say, if you were going to go long here um, and then look to add over here, perhaps, then the stop would need to go under these under these lows here and probably, um, you know, just keep the trade smaller at this point and work it in because i don't really know what we're up against here in the bigger picture you know so we've got to kind of just edge in so these smaller thin lines just mean a smaller trade that's all um yeah i mean i'm not getting five waves down here i mean i could go one and two and three here and four here and then one and two and three and four and five but wave four overlaps this one here so that's not working very well so you know it could even be a triangle across here as some sort of you know a wave to here b c d and e over here as well so it's a bit complicated and i don't understand it and i'm better off saying that and, uh, and then moving but this is starting to give impulse waves across the planet in in all indices and the FTSE is going to be the same as well. So with the FTSE here, this is just 1,000 ticks here. I was looking at it as a an A and a B and then counting one and two here, as you may know, and then one and two, and then one, two, three, four, five for the third, fourth and fifth for the third, the fourth, and the fifth wave up here for the C wave. And I thought, well, that could be the possible top here. But technically, if we take out that B wave high here, then we're going to be bullish from that point. You know, and it looks like we've got an A and a B. And in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five here. A little bit better in that C wave there. Probably, yeah, could probably be a bit dodgy. Um, and here, though, we can see that this is five waves here. And we've got one, two, three, four, five here. So once again, I could put, um, you know, I could put, put wave four here and wave five here. And then we'll get some sort of ABC. Now, that could be the top of the market at that point. You know, and it could come down, or we need to look at it going up to, up from that point. So I'll just take that away, and then this would that would be the safe trade there, um, because it could be the B wave here and the C wave here, and that's the end of it. And then we come down from that point. You know, so that's the trick. If, however, if this five waves here, we put that. Let's just put that there just to be sure to be sure so that could be five waves to that point and that's the end of it we go down okay so to move past that we can also i'll just put that there as a wave one there so those five waves up here make those five waves make wave one and back for wave two and this is a little abc pattern here so once again a classic trading levels pattern across the 7200 and you can see here that that 7200 you know the market wants to go through there doesn't it but it's not sitting on top of there as support and that's what you kind of need to see visually for that to go to, for that to happen um okay so also with the the euro even though you don't trade the euro us dollar that's kind of important to the dax and we we're looking for one more low here but it's got me sort of thinking now um 
if the other markets have got lows in place, I mean, this could lag, of course. I mean, have I miscounted this down through here and we've got the low in place? So what I could say here is that we can go long above that, above that, that area there because we're looking to go long because we've finished this leg here. You know, we're going up here somewhere in line with the DAX. Um, or are they going to be out of sync for a little bit and we are going to get one more move down through here so we need to be a little bit uh, mindful of this so I want to go we'll go in here and take a little look at this and um, and just get a little bit of strategy sort of uh, happening let's just bring in a big load here so so from wave four here down to wave five so i was looking down at wave one and two and then three and four and five a bit high for the wave four i guess but uh yeah okay i guess let me just double check that um not quite there but yeah sort of a 50 a good 50 percent retracement rather than a 40 percent so not the end of the world but still there so the thing here is that um if I look at this as a wave four here, you know, maybe I could squeeze a, squeeze a, uh, can I do that three? Yeah, I could look at this as wave one to here and to put all of that to wave one here. So I could put, I'm just thinking, can I get five waves up here? I could put that as wave one here and two here. And that would give me three, four, and five, and then we pull back as an ABC pattern here. Not getting a nice five waves up there, so I've counted it. Um, I've counted it down as wave one and two, and then one here, and then going back for wave two. Is that low below that one? It's all these little. It's always in the detail, isn't it? I mean that's that's pierced that low there so that's sort of okay don't really have five waves up there or do i can we what have we got in here it's more like a corrective wave here for that but it looks like it wants to go up doesn't it unless we look at this as as wave one and two as wave one here and a b c for wave two then one two three four five for one and two so i could go that way with it as well I mean, technically, I mean, we're talking about going long above the top here, but we could also go long above here too. So classic trading levels pattern on, on that there. We may just go up there and pull back again, and then we would need to look at this as, as one and two and one and two. No, we can't do that because that's taken that low out there, hasn't it? So, yeah, it's not giving me a nice five ways up unless I include that and go one and two and then three and four and five, that works, and pulling back to the 50, 60%. But this low has taken that low out, so I need to be mindful of that. So I'll just see. Um, but in terms of trading and putting your trading hat on, if you get a classic trading levels pattern at this level here, so the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, a bit like this, the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, and then some sort of ABC pattern here, uh, and then up at that point, so that would, that's a bit more refined than um, than the other one, because if the DAX is going to move up, then this is probably going to move with it, you know. And, and uh, then I've I've made a mistake in this move down through here, which not the first mistake that I've ever made, as you all know. So I can see where I can make that mistake. I can put um, I can put wave three here and wave four here and then wave five down here for that so i can see that i can do that that would leave me with wave one and two here and then one and two and three and four and five to here but it's a bit small for that and then one and two here mm, pushing it a bit but <clears throat> yeah but yeah look you know I mean, the idea of using Elliot, sometimes it's beautiful and clean and makes life easy and you wonder why not everybody's using it. And then other times it's like only gives you sort of half of the story and you get, get into the guessing game and you make mistakes. And so for me, it all just comes down to the trade setup. If I see this number, number one here, the strongest number in the market as support, then I have to go with that, you know. And if I'm a little bit unsure, well, then <clears throat> I put in less 
so I'm at less risk and then build in because if we're going to be bullish here then we'll build we want to get a small position just here because we want to build in on one one and two and three here we want to get you know a good four trades in here <clears throat> before the trend before the trend starts up here further you know so anyway that's that um let's just see how the how it plays out but a classic trading levels pattern on this um on this number here and we, you need to build in on that point you know we don't need to go long on top there because it would go long on 1010 the next level up here for that so yeah alrighty i'll leave it all at that uh thanks for tuning in cheers